Welcome back to the channel. This is Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. So glad you've tuned in today. Um, we're going to do a little follow-up here. This is our update number two, two. Uh, on the Ecuador crisis situation, the emergency order, and uh, the, the things that have been happening here. And let me just say right away, thank you so much. The first video we did on this emergency um, was probably our most watched video in the first 48 hours that we've ever done. And uh, so many wonderful comments from you folks. We appreciate it. Yeah, we always get one or two who are, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, everyone has an opinion. So, yeah, we really appreciate it. And we appreciate all the thumbs up and uh, more thumbs ups than we've ever had. And uh, we thank you so much for that. So we told you we'd follow up, you know, as we have more news on this. And I do want to say that all of our information we get from uh, local news, uh, like we have a newspaper here called La Hora that's online here in Loja. So the, the facts that we give you, the things that we say, are coming from that. They're coming from other um, national publications. Yeah, we get news out of Cuenca, out yeah. of... Um, Ecuador in general has, it covers everything. La Orta covers everything, but specifically in the Loja province. So we're trying to cover the bases with the best quality news we can come up with. And we're not news reporters. Nope. So you got to forgive us when we get something wrong because we're only reporting what's been told to us or what we've read. Now, the um, people do send me videos. And one of the videos that we showed you a clip from uh, was from, I think it's Calderon Park in Cuenca. Um, I'm, forgive me if I got the park name wrong, but it's one right out front of the big cathedral uh, with the three blue domes. And there were people running and screaming everywhere. And the report was that there were shots fired. Well, you can hear a shot on the, the video. If, uh, I, I, I had taken the audio out. There were some reports that, well, there weren't really shots fired. Some policeman shot his gun in the air to make people leave and go home. Don't know how true that is, but that's what was said. Yeah. So it turns out there wasn't a bunch of violence in Cuenca at all. Um, there certainly was in Guayaquil and other areas uh, along the coast and in Quito. Um, nothing that we've said has been to uh, try to diminish that violence in any way whatsoever. We can only tell you what we experience here and what's being told to us. Well, and there's a lot of fear because, again, this is not something the country's really had to go through. And so they don't know what to expect. You know, it's all what they hear. And so there's a lot of panic and a lot of frustration around the country. Yeah, we've never been through this here before, so we didn't know what to expect. I gave the advice that if you happen, you know, if you're thinking about coming here, wait a couple days before you book your, your flights and things because... Um, we didn't know what, what to expect, and sure enough, in a couple of days, it was pretty safe. Now, there are areas in Ecuador that are not safe yet. Trust me, <laughs> they're, they're certainly not. And I think if you want more up-to-date information on a particular area, if you watch GM Ace's video, which uh, we put on our community page, we put the link to that on our community page, and GM Ace, um, I'll leave the link in our description as well. He did a wonderful video that we watched yesterday, very well thought out, and um, I think he has some pretty good info there. Um, I did want to let Lisa talk a little bit about some of the facts and figures of what's going on. Things are really pretty under control. I think the, the cartels were somewhat testing the president, see what his resolve would be, and he came back with a resounding, we're not tolerating this. Um, I also... I think the president was asked, are you going to do what El Salvador did, what the president there did? And as I mentioned in the last video, I'm not real keen on what the president's doing there in terms of taking away liberties of people. And, um, and I think it's kind of slipped into the tyranny side a bit. Well, the Ecuadorian president, President Naboa, said, um, no, we have a different constitution. We are not going to do what Salvador did. But I do think he's handling the situation. We're getting results. We are getting results. It's been about a week. Um, the first day was when the violence and the hysteria really was pronounced in the area. So we just, this is not a, a negative update really. This is really a positive update that in a week, 
they really got a handle on things. So the, the, they're calling it the terrorist gangs, and that's a, a different classification so that they can um, hold them a little bit more accountable than they did in the past. But that violence has reduced significantly since the state of emergency. Um, murders dropped from 29 a day to 14 a day nationwide. And the, so that's all murders in general, not just gang violence, but all murders have dropped significantly. Uh, violent attacks dropped 70%, and extortion and kidnapping has dropped um, as well. They had 19,000 operations and have led um, more than 1,800 arrests. 169 of those arrests are confirmed to be terrorist gang activity. Um, hostages, I wanted to give you an update on the hostages. The hostages have um, all been rescued, and so they have governmental control over the prison system. So all of that is um, kind of back to normal. Um, I think Noboa also is said he's going after everyone because he was asked about the additional corruption. Is he going to continue on? Um, though he's kind of got things under control and, and the gang violence has quieted for now, um, he's not stopping. He's going after anybody giving support to any gangs or terrorist gang members. Um, he's looking at judges, council members, guards, um, elected officials of any sort. Basically, he's cleaning house. Um, and sounds like he's doing a pretty good job at it. We haven't heard a lot of specifics, or maybe I haven't checked in on and read up enough on the uh, um, elected officials that have gotten arrested. I saw one uh, article, but that, that was about a week ago, so I'm sure there's more going on. Um, there have been more false bomb threats uh, they go check them out because they want to make sure everybody feels secure. Um, but they know that there's a lot of fear. And so they do go check out the bomb but they bomb uh, threats. But they said 98% are, are not real bombs. Ecuador loves fireworks. And um, so if somebody hears fireworks going off, they're concerned. And the police go check it out. So that's really nice that they're not ignoring what the people are telling them. Um, let's see. The only other thing is, that's kind of all of that. The 90-day the state of emergency is still in effect. Um, which, if you're a carnival participant and you like to come to park carnival, they are saying they're still going to have carnival, but it's going to uh, have to work around the state of exception. And the only other thing is border crossings in Peru and Colombia um, basically require a record um, criminal record certificate to get in and out through those countries. If you're, uh, they say a foreigner, but it really is if you're a non-citizen, if you don't have legal citizenship in Ecuador then Ecuador is checking the, the records. So Lisa and I, even though we are permanent residents, we still have to show that document That's to right. come back in the country now. So um, we've already downloaded it, got it on our cell phones. No yeah. big deal, already printed it out. Yeah. It just shows we have no criminal record. Mm -hmm. So, um, and if you do have criminal record, it shows what that record's about. And uh, yeah. ours says no. And, and let me just say, the country seems to be, yeah. uh, the Ecuadorian people as a whole, there goes our alarm system again. Hey, alarm system. Anyway, the Ecuadorian people as a whole really seem to be behind their president on this. Mm -hmm. They're standing with the military and the police and encouraging them to get this cleaned up once and for all. And we hope the president won't stop here. That he'll just get this stuff cleaned up throughout the country. Yeah, I think the only other thing I read, and this was one of the reasons they were asking him if he was modeling after El Salvador, was that even after the um, state of emergency is over, he wants to continue to allow the military to back up the police 
They wouldn't take the place of the police, but they're supposed to back up the police. Um, so you've got a whole group of highly trained people in the military. He didn't want them just sitting in a barracks waiting for nothing to happen. So those are good people he's going to put to use to support and protect the people in Ecuador. And let me just say, um, shame on the media in the rest of the world, um, especially the U.S. They're trying to portray Ecuador now as this huge, dangerous, dangerous place. Well, you know, just a couple of years ago, they were reporting that it was the most safest place in the world. So that's what you can expect out of the media. Very <laughs> well, little. <laughs> let's compare it. Let's see three years of chaos in the U.S. and going on right now versus one week in Ecuador. Hmm, I'm still thinking Ecuador is looking pretty good. And they're all trying to play the blame game on this president, the past president. It's been going on for a lot longer. It's just oh, yeah. came to a head. Now, um, let me also say, we had a comment on our channel about, well, this would have never happened in the U.S. Here's what I have to say about that. 9-11. <laughs> Did you forget about 9-11? 3,000 people perished in one day? Are you kidding me? It's happened in the U.S. It's yeah. happening now because you're letting hundreds of terrorists over the border every day unchecked. Yeah. And we don't know the actual number of that because nobody can keep count. These are the gotaways and the, the general people that they're letting in. No one has any clue exactly how many terrorists are being let in. But I think to say hundreds a day would not be an exaggeration by any, any means. Yeah, I mean, around the world, things are definitely different. And I'm just really happy we're here in Ecuador where the president is really taking this seriously and we'll just keep praying for him and support him and the military and the police the best we can. Yeah, we really appreciate the efforts that, that um, these people have put forth in trying to clean up this country. And I think, you know, if we, if we keep going at this pace, they'll have it cleaned up very, very, very quickly and maybe they won't uh, allow this again. Well, they are saying that um, most of the uh, gang leaders, you know, obviously got caught off guard with the amount of uh, force he came at them with. Um, so they're still there. He's not stopping. But uh, let's hope we're just all moving in the right direction. Here in Vilcabamba, um, we never felt unsafe. Uh, we know the first day there was a run on the gas station because... We're, we're kind of used here, to, used to national emergencies where they have, <laughs> you know, these um, protests and things and everything gets shut down. And one of the first things to go would be obviously gasoline. Yeah. So there was a run on the gas station, but that didn't bother us a bit. Um, the home invasions here, the home robberies, I should say, they're still going on. Sure. Um, we, you know, we've had a couple in the last two weeks that I've heard about. Don't have solid information on those, mm -hmm. so I won't speak to it much. Don't know if anyone was hurt or not. Um, so that is still, you know, still going on. And I'd like to see um, the president address those things here in Vilcabamba specifically, as mm -hmm. well as in other towns. Um, so yeah, we hope that that gets cleaned up as well. Yeah. So that's really all we have. Things are much better and they look like they're improving. Again, watch the video from GMAs because I think it was a well thought out presentation. He did a great job. The guy is smart Very and smart. he's got his ear to the ground everywhere. We're just kind of living our lives here. We don't want to be news reporters necessarily. Yeah. But we do like to tell you about our lives and how these things affect us here. And we hope you'll watch us again on the next one. So ciao for now.